delay there because our apologies on that. We had a little temporary tech issue, but God be glorified. Amen. So we want to say good morning to all of you. Um, just to understand the Bible and Baptist Assembly, located right here in Clayton, Delaware, specifically 355 West Duck Creek Road. That's right here, right here in Clayton, Delaware. We love all of you so much. Praise God for you choosing to receive from God this morning digitally. Uh, that's a good thing. If you uh, choose to ever come down, feel free to bring your kids. We have our chosen generation children's ministry where the kids learn the same principles that you will learn. And then we go out later in the week and apply it together. Amen. Also, if you are led to sow into God's kingdom, you can go to giveify.com, click on the building and look for Lisa J. And that's an avenue in which, if you're led to sow into God's kingdom through you, you can give Amen. So, love you so much. Praise God for all that you're going to do to receive from God, to get ready to turn on your continue to keep your hearts open and receive from them. Amen. We're going to bring back the worship team and get ready to fill this ground and praise God. So, we can say welcome. Focus on to you, Lord. How we thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I look to you. I won't be overwhelmed. Give me vision to see things like you do. God, I look to you. Just what to do Hallelujah That is our prayer to the Lord Hallelujah And we are looking to you Lord Say God I look to you God I look to you I won't be overwhelmed Give me vision To see things like you do. God, I look to you. You're where my help comes from. Give me wisdom, cause you know just what to do. And I will love you, Lord, my strength. And I will love you, Lord, my shield. I will love you, love you, love you, 
Father God. God, we thank you that you are always going to show us what to do. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Your truth, your word is truth. Your word is truth. Very, very key. 
because we understand there are a lot of things that we may see that might be factual out there, but that doesn't mean it's true. Make sure you get that. There are a lot of things we might see that are that is factual in today's times, but that doesn't mean it's true. And now that's very, very important because our eyes can be deceiving. Okay. So just because all right, just because we see laws being changed in certain areas, it, it could be in anything. It's, it's all kind of laws being passed. And we see that, or we may even hear that, and that might be a fact. But that doesn't mean it's true. Does that make sense? So we got to make sure of that. Very, very important. Very, very important. All right. Now, let's look at our companion scripture, John 7, 37 through 39, New King James Version. On the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried out, saying, If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. But this he spoke concerning the Spirit, whom those believing in him would receive, for the Holy Spirit was not yet given, because Jesus was not yet glorified. So we understand there, a lot of pieces in that particular scripture, one of the things that God wants us to extract is the fact that Jesus referenced, he used the word of God as his reference point. So he, and Jesus' life, we'll see another scripture later on, Jesus' life wasn't about him just saying and doing things on his own, he used the Bible as his magnet to both reference and his actions. That's what we have to do. We have to use something that's stable to say, okay, I'm not just going to, when circumstances arise, whether positively or negatively, I'm not just going to reach, even based on my past experiences, I, if it's not reaching to something that's stable, then I got to change the way I was doing some things. Amen? Very, very true. Remember, because we said the Bible is true. Like you said, laws being passed out there. You got laws about different sexuality, that kind of stuff. Okay. So that doesn't mean, that doesn't make that, that makes it a fact that it's happened in that particular state, but that doesn't make it true. You, you gotta look at the word of God and see what truth is. And we still gotta do things in love. You make sense? God's desire, I don't care what sin it is, God's desire is for people to love him. So if people, if they caught up in homosexuality or anger or fighting or murder, it's all the same sense. Sin is still sin. We gotta love people. It's, it's all about love. But guess what? Because, you know, you had a past too. Does that make sense? And so, you know, I say you don't know me too. Look, we all was engaged in stuff, but that's where Jesus is. He is the stable maker. So it doesn't matter what stuff people were going through. I don't care what it is. He's the stable maker. Say, all right, we washing all that clean. Let's start fresh new. Let's help you grow from this point on. Amen. God, but he did it out of love. And that's what we got to do. Amen. And he referenced the scripture at this point. All right, now, we got to jump with this series. Is it gets to a place where after we leave from here, from this point forward, that we make the word of God a magnet for all our decisions. It's the magnet. Y'all know what a magnet does. A lot, a lot of people know what a magnet does. You learn in elementary school, maybe even outside on the playground sometimes. You have a little magnet, you put it by some paper clips or anything else, and everything else is draws to it. Well, I'm sorry, no, that's not. That was a, I messed up. That was wrong. Not everything draws to it, but, but things that are metal draw to it, right? Am I my right? Science of lady. Yeah. Right, right. <laughs> everything that is metal draws to it. But you see those things, they, they, they're, not, they're not wavering, they're not deciding, they're not trying to go their own way. If that magnet is anywhere near close to it, it's drawn right to it. That's what we got to be when it comes to the Word of God. We got to say, okay, something happened, I'm going right to the Word of God. I got That's 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 my stable maker, amen? All right, cool, cool. Now, let's, let's review. So we understand this, just solidifying that the word is something we can count on. Matthew 24 and 35, New King James Version. Matthew 24 and 35, New King James Version. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will by no means pass away. Wow, okay, that sounds like God is saying his word is pretty important. And you know, we see heaven and earth, well, we don't see heaven right now physically, but we certainly see earth. And so anything you go around, anything you can look up and see is gonna pass away. But God's word, what he speaks, period, in particular in the written form, is going to stay. Wow, that means that's something that's going to stay. That's something that's stable. Now the proof text, let's look at Psalm 138 and 2, New King James Version. But you have magnified your word above all your name. Wow, God is saying, look, heaven and earth will pass away, but the things he speaks are going to stay. He's also saying the things that he speaks is above his name. Well, those two scriptures alone, and as many others, I, you know, makes it clear that the word of God is stable. And if God deems it higher than his own name, 
That means that's something that we can put our anchor in so that when, when certain things arise, we don't have to count on pills or alcohol or you know anything else that people try to gravitate to. We can anchor ourselves in the word of God and that's going to stable us because when the winds blow, or when things seem extra sunny, we can stabilize ourselves and say, okay, this is something I'm going to be drawn to. It's going to be the magnet for my decision making because this, this thing right here is above God's name. How blessed are we that he gave us a written form of that? That's huge. That's huge. All right? Think about that. God gave us something that's above his name that we can utilize. That's huge, all right? All right, let's look at our role model again. John 6, 44 through 46, New Living Translation. For no one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws them to me. And at the last day, I will raise them up. Again, here's Jesus saying again, as, this, as it is written in the scriptures, that can he reference the Bible for his actions and his word, they will all be taught by God. Everyone who listens to the Father and learns from him comes to me. Not that anyone has ever seen the Father, only I who has sent, who was sent from God have seen him. All right, so again, we see here that Jesus, again, he lived his life referencing the scriptures. It was a magnet for his actions and his words, his decision making. If so, and if we choose to have a relationship with Jesus Christ, which means by his nature, we are trying to grow and be more and more like Jesus, then one of the things we should be doing is doing what he did, which is when he used the Bible as his go-to, that means we need to use the Bible as our go-to if we're trying to be more and more like Jesus, right? Yeah. All right, now, background, we understood this. We, you know, we, we understand 1 Thessalonians 5, 3. We understand we're a spirit. We have a soul that lives in the body. The spirit part of us is closest to God. Our soul is our mind, our will, and our emotions. And our body includes our five senses. We have that carnal flesh, right? The part that wants to sin. Well, the problem has been that we've made too many decisions out of our body, out of our soul, and out of our flesh. Our soul, again, the mind, will, and emotions, our mind tells us what we think, the will tells us what we want, and emotions tell us how we feel. Well, sometimes when you got when you got mad at your child, that was out of emotion, that was out of the soul. The, the spirit didn't lead that decision. Does that make sense? And so we have to say, all right, wait, okay, I gotta get some things back in line because I don't, I don't, you know, I don't go around seeing the Holy Spirit is going off like that, I don't see Jesus going off like that. So we have to we have to get to a point where we are being spirit led. Being spirit led, that is God's desire. All right. Now, so in that moment, we talk about this review. So in that moment, when circumstances arise, we got to ask ourselves, who's trying to speak right now? You know, back in the day, we used to, when we was growing up as kids, you didn't like you would see people speak, talking to themselves. You'd be like, well, let me press pull off a little bit. I know I did around the way. You be like, well, you pull off a little bit, but you ain't know he had a forty in his hand, all kind of stuff. But you gotta, but, but but you know he's like, hey, hey, he's he talking to himself or whatever. But now, it, now we, now if we have Jesus as our Lord and Savior, we have a kingdom mindset. Yeah, we are supposed to speak to ourselves. We are supposed to speak to some things that are inanimate. So in that moment, that's your life. You need to speak to yourself. Like, oh, who's speaking right now? Whoa, 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 whoa. Uh, uh. I can't have. So I can't have you lead this decision. Uh, uh. Flash. No, no, no. I can't have you do that. Nope. I'm spirit led. I'm spirit. I can do all things in Christ's strength. You speak back. Speak back. We learned that in the verbal series, all right? You got to do that. You got to do that, all right? And when you do that, and we learned this in the verbally charting our destiny series, when you are walking in that, you'll begin to see with other people as well, like, oh, okay. When they say and do things, you're like, okay, they, they acting out of their soul right now. Because it, it, so then it, you're, it, you're able to hear from the Holy Spirit about how to, how to spiritually respond and that emotion react. Because just because a, a person reacts out of their emotions, doesn't mean you go down with them. Oh, let me give a piece of my mind back. No, 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 no. Because somebody got to be here from the Lord that moment. So it gives you an opportunity to see it. That's why it's very, very important that we ask ourselves who's leading this decision, who's speaking right now, and let's make sure we verbally try to observe that with other people. Okay? Now, so we said part being spirit led, you know, again, just doing review, is to make sure we are both process driven and principle driven. Very, very important. I don't care what your lifestyle is, this is a piece that you got to get because this tells a process because you need something that gives you some steps about what to do when circumstances arise. The first step is to be process driven. 
The process is I need to go to the word of God. I need to say to myself, what does the word say? When circumstances arise, that's got to be in our spirit from this series on. You got to say, what does the word say? You don't no longer gravitate to uh, asking yourself questions. What should I do? I'm in despair or, you know, I don't know what to do. Your question, the question that needs to come out of your mouth is, what does the word say? Because that should jar your spirit to go right to the principal part, which is now let me find a principle in the word of God that I can apply. Certainly as you uh, learn um, some scriptures and you've been applying them, you, you may already have some, some principles that you can apply. But even if you don't in that moment, hey, just say to you, so we pray in tongues and go to the scripture and find a principle. How do we do that? Well, we look at that, we look in the back of the Bible and we find a word that deals with that circumstance and you go into that scripture and you'll find a principle that you can extract, right? Now, very, very important. So we have to be process driven. The process is step one is the process is the process is what does the word say? I gotta say to myself, I'm not gonna go to what well, my supervisor or anything else says, I gotta go with the word says. Now, now I ain't saying disobey your supervisor. I'm, I'm talking about if they have you something weird or whatever. And then you gotta make sure you, you find a principle in the word of God and apply it. All right, very, very important. Then we look at some various examples. They're just one of them. So if you happen to be unmarried currently and you want to be married, well, that's a good thing. Well, that's no different. That could be a good circumstance or a challenge circumstances. You know, sometimes you can look around and see your friends getting married, that kind of stuff. And you gotta say, oh, you know, instead of being worried or looking at the top, the clock and say, oh, biological clock, you gotta say, no, 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 what's the process? This is no different. The process is, what does the word say? Amen. All right, the word says, all right, let me find let me find a promise in the word of God, let me find a principle. Well, here's one right here, Mark 11, 24. New King James Version. Therefore, I, whatever I, therefore I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe you receive them, you shall have them. All right, so the process is, what does the word say? I feel like I want to get married. I've seen people getting married. Exactly. I'm not, I, I, I feel nervous is coming on. I'm, I may be getting numerically and naturally older, but you gotta say, oh no, no, what is the process is? Oh no, no, what does the word say? Whatever things I ask when I pray, believe I receive them, I shall have it. You stay in faith. You, you've already gone through the ABCs of faith process. You know what to do. It's no different, amen? That's how you rock and roll with that. All right, here's another principle you can apply. Hey, delight yourself to the Lord, and He will give you the desires of your heart. Well, that's not that's not except for you want to get married. True. That applies there too. That's a whole little Got my mom's don't so you that's all right. That's all right. There you go. There you go. There you go. But the the point is, it doesn't have to be something negative. It could be something positive in terms of the circumstance presented to yourself. But anything can get you going into your soul or your flesh or your body. Anything. So we have to have something stable to say, all right, what does is, what is the word say? You got it? All right. And, and again, if you happen not to know the entire Bible from Genesis to Revelation, that's okay. In that moment, if nothing else, you could just, in that moment, you could just, if nothing else, you could just say Jesus and give you a chance to pray in tongues or give you a chance to get to the word or get to your phone. Look up a scripture with regards to anxiety or nervousness or whatever it is. And finally, I want to say, all right, now I'm going to do that. I'm going to speak this. I'm going to walk by faith. I'm going to keep speaking this. Amen? Very, very key. Very, very key. All right, now, here's our deep anchor practice. You ready? You ready? Here's our deep anchor training practice. We're going to get some interaction going, okay? Just rock and roll, rock and roll, rock and roll. All right. I'm, I'm seeing Elissa speaking the word now. Praise the Lord. The call is done. That's done. That's my girl right there. All right, so here's the scenario. Your child came home, this is like even if you don't have a child right now, just imagine. Your child came home and said that she did not pass her class and you feel yourself starting to get angry. So, how do you apply being process and principle driven? The interaction, Bill, you know, and you know, you, you you talk to that particular child, and you told them along the way, hey, make sure you study him. You when you come home, grab a snack. What were you just say? Go, you know, grab a snack. You know, take take a little time. Yeah, I, I know you've been home for a little bit. I mean, I know you just been in school all day. We tell them to come home, take a half hour, hour. You know, grab some, you know, grab a little extra snack, and then go right, go right to them books, go right to hitting it, that kind of thing. And you know, you tell them this and that kind of stuff, and you tell them to study and all those things, and all of a sudden. And you know, depending on the age, sometimes as parents, we, we, we start off looking at all their test grades and all that stuff as they come in. And sometimes as, they're, as they get older and as you're led, 
you know, you may not check homework every night because you think they be applying that kind of stuff to you. Give them a little bit of trust, and all of a sudden, bang, wind up with this. So, let's rock and roll. So, thoughts? How do we apply? Anybody? How do we apply? Okay, let's start, let's start, with, let's start with the symphony first. Okay. What's the process? So I'm looking at James 1.19. So process is the root word. Yep. Okay. And, and then it says, my dear brothers and sisters, understand this. Everyone should be quick to listen, mm. slow to speak, and slow to anger. Oh, I think she, I think y'all gonna see she hit a nail. Uh, she hit a home run out the park. Why? Because this, this has less to do with the student because this is an opportunity for your flesh. Yes, we can deal with the student and, and them needing to study and all those kind of pieces, yes. But in the moment, this is a circumstance for you. Parent A, parent B, this is a circumstance for you. What do you do in your flesh? So the problem, something gave an example, she went to the word and went to use the scripture. Quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to become angry. Okay, good, good, good. Any other thoughts? I mean, she hit the nail on the head in terms of the process, but good. I think in this instance, it's also important to affirm the child. So even though you are angry, you are to encourage them that the, you know, if they had negative experience in this particular class, that it doesn't mean that they're not smart and that they don't have the capacity to do something that they can do. Philippians 4, 15, they can do all things through Christ who strengthens them. And then, then, you know, but then uncover what is the learning here? What are some of the things that we can do differently in moving forward so that we can experience the promises of God? Okay, great. So Jamie, so Jamie took it to the, the child, okay? So because right now we talk about our flesh in terms of what would happen with us in the moment, but then Jamie took it to the next level and said, all right, this is how we can figure out now how to help that child develop in terms of speaking life, encouraging them they can do all things to Christ. All right, good, good, good. So you did a one-two punch there. Good, good, good. All right, but again, that's, that's where in your flesh. And in that moment, you know, you, you see red. You're like, I'm told them this, I've been told, you know, all right, all right so. Let's look at this. Ah, I think Tiffany hit the nail off the head. Okay. James 1 and 19, New Living Translation. Understand this, my dear brothers. This is New Living Translation. Uh, understand this, my dear brothers and sisters. You must all be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to come, and slow to get angry. Good, good, good job. Another principle you use, Galatians 5, 22 to 23. Uh, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, kindness, goodness, patience, uh, gentleness, and self control. Uh, Against such there is no law. So we gotta we gotta make sure that this is in that moment, this is a circumstance for you. Yes, we'll deal with the child, but in that moment, how do you what do you do because your emotion is possibly angry? So that being the case, that means your soul is fighting to lead in that moment. So you gotta do something to harness that soul back so you can be spirit led. So you gotta gravitate to something because right now all you see is you see anger, you see fear, you just like you gotta do something that harness that soul back because that soul wants to scream out. So you gotta be spirit led even in those moments. Amen. Very very important. But it's gotta be the word of God. It's gotta be truth that leads you. Okay. All right. Another one. Another one. All right. So. You get a pain and a challenging health report from the doctor. You get a pain and a challenging health report from the doctor. How do we apply the principle, the process principle? Ugh. How do we apply the process of principle driven? Thoughts, thoughts, thoughts. Okay. Then we just had the health series. We just recently got past the health series. Okay, but we, all right, all right thoughts. You can start Miss Miss Lady. Okay. So, you know, scripture says, whose report shall we believe when we know we are to report? So process while we go to the word. Go to the word. Um, and we are going to read the report of the word, the Lord. So find scriptures on healing. For example, by the stripes of Jesus, we are healed. Is one that we can quote over and over again to get it down in our spirit. Um, and it will help to build our faith. Good, good, good. Very important. So those first processes, you go to the word of God, you know, again, what does the word say? Because all you do is you want for a routine checkup. You know what I mean? Or you may have wanted to get, get a little pain, you may have felt a little different, so you just go in there and just kind of get it checked out. 
And you hear a challenging report, and all of a sudden he's like, oh, well, what's this? You gotta say, no, 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 what, is, what, is, what does that do? What does that do? I gotta make sure I'm going through the word of God. But you know, doctors are good, and they are designed to help us target the area, but sometimes they don't, they're not spirit sensitive. They're just gonna say this, and they're going to unintentionally, I like to think unintentionally, bring doom and gloom and that kind of stuff. And you gotta be, you gotta be spiritually funny when you go to the doctor. Now they, they're designed to do what they're supposed to do. They help you, can, they can help you target your faith. To help you say, okay, well, this cough, instead of being a cough, it might be asthma or something like that. Okay, now that helps you target your faith regards to asthma. 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 <laughs> so, but you gotta make sure that you're going there, uh, going to the Word of God, and we're God and speaking. Okay, you have anything else? Yeah, I, I, and I think this is uh, probably applies to both scenarios, and definitely applies to me. Mm -hmm. I got to figure out, you know, who's trying to speak at that moment. Yep. Like, and don't be emotionally driven or Exactly. Another home run of the park. Again, very, very important because these, these things are everyday life. So you got you got that other slide. Tim is saying, look, I, I got to figure out in that moment who's trying to speak right now because one of these other one of these other parts of me is trying to speak and try to lead my actions. Tim is saying, no, I got to figure out a way to make sure I'm dialing that either that flesh or that soul or that body back so I can be spirit led. That make sense? Now it. it now, because you're being spirit, that doesn't mean you don't necessarily deal with situations, because you know, you still may have to deal with that child that had a challenging moment, a challenging grade or whatever. That's fine. But you want you you want to do it in love and you want to be poignant with what the spirit is telling you to do, because the spirit has the answer. So he's gonna give us some guidance, because you know, our, our emotions, you don't know what's gonna come out. I mean, you, you know in general, but you like, now you gotta go back later and do damage control. Like, oh man, no. <laughs> Aside, aside from the grade now, I gotta apologize for coming off at you and all that kind of stuff. It's all different from the old grade. So Terrence hit the nail on the head. We gotta make sure in that moment. So praise God for him giving us these tools to say, look, I gotta, I gotta say to myself, oh, who trying to speak right now? We gotta do that, we gotta do that because the, the, the emotions are trying to capture us, all right? Very, very good, very good, good class, good class. All right, so another different principle you use for that scenario, 1 John 5, 14 to 15, New King James Version. Now, this is the confidence that we have in him, that we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. Let's pause there. So we can no, long, no longer, I mean, we learned this in the faith series, let's no longer say we want God to answer. God's already answered. I know that was a thing we may have grown up in, in church and learned, and it, it seems like a nice spiritual thing to say, but it is, it kind of falls under the category of religious, because it's not biblically accurate because God's already given an answer. So, and we know that we don't have to, we can have confidence knowing that when we, if we're, if we are a Christian, that we go to God and ask him for something, we can be confident that he heard us. We don't have to keep asking him and asking him, he heard you. That's just the first part. That's, that's comforting by itself to know that because one of the blessings when Jesus died on the cross, Bible said we remember we learned this in the series with Jesus, that veil was torn too, that veil was rent. For one, it was ripped in two. One part of it was to assure that, you know, uh, if you're not Jew, you can still go to God. Praise God. Hallelujah. That's a good thing for the Gentiles and everyone else. That's all of us. The other part is that we no longer need a high priest like they needed. We can our high priest is Jesus Christ. So we can go directly to God. We don't have to do like they did in the Old Testament, where they had to send a priest in, they had to have everything on, and they had to go in the right way and have all these other things to atone for everyone else's sin. We can go directly to God. So that's a good thing, just knowing that we can go to God and he hears us. That's, that's just even before we get to the rest of the sentence. It says, and if we know he hears us, whatever we ask, it does say whatever, that's aside from asking this, so we're going to ask to be able to see the Bible, okay? <laughs> and we ask whatever we ask, we know that we have the petitions, which are things you ask for. We know that we have the petitions that we asked of him. Wow, that's a good thing. So if you're having to go and you say, and you hit, 
experiencing some pain or go to the doctor and he, you hear a report, you say, oh, no, no, what does the word say? Oh, okay, last thing, last thing didn't coin to this, well, he hears me. If I know he hears me, you, you know, I know you give me the petition once I request. You gotta encourage yourself in that moment, amen, be in faith. Good stuff, good stuff, another scripture. Uh-oh, here's another one. Romans 8, and it's all once you can apply in all of them, but in particular, that last, the last scenario, Romans 8 and 32, New King James Version, he who did not spare his own son, but deliver him up for us all, how shall he not with them really give us all things? That is awesome because what it says is, if God will give us Jesus, what else wouldn't he give? That's, right. That's huge because Jesus was the most important thing to God, God the Father. God's saying, if I give you Jesus, why in the world would I withhold healing? Why in the world would I withhold a new job or a new bicycle or get new oil change? That would make it seem like the oil change is more important than Jesus. No, he's like, if I give you Jesus, I'm going to give you everything that comes with him. So that's a good thing. He said, he who did not spare his own son, but deliver him up for us all, how shall he not with, with, with him freely give us all things? Well, that all things includes divine healing. Praise God. Praise God. That's a good thing. That is a very, very good thing. All right. So in concluding for this particular series, God is awesome because he's just helping us on our day-to-day -day life to say, look, I need you to not be up and down by circumstances. I need you to be spirit-led. So as we see here, we got to let the word be the magnet for our decisions. Let the word be the magnet for our decisions. Man. Again, if you happen not to know every scripture in the Bible, guess what? <laughs> you ain't alone. So let's make sure, but do the ones that you know, and then choose to learn some more. And whatever that circumstance is, Again, you can always say the name Jesus in a moment, but then take some time, look on your phone, look in your app, say, all right, let me, let me look up a scripture that deals with this. Go to the back of the Bible. They have the dictionary, the concordance. You look it up, look up that word, and find some principles. This way, you're being process-driven and principle-driven. Again, you want to be spirit-led, let the word be the magic for your decision-making, to be spirit-led and be process and principle-driven and not circumstance-driven. Amen? Amen? Give God glory. Praise God. I mean, it's, it's awesome that we got a